I feel like I'm taking the stage alone, um, which is really uncomfortable for a reporter. Um, but hopefully, uh, I'll be joined by David Chom, uh, the godfather of privacy, as they like to call him. Uh, I think accurately. So, David, are you there? Yes. Can you hear me? Hi. Loud and clear, David. It's good to see you. Thank you so much for dialing in. Pleasure. I, uh, I had some slides and stuff, but I'm happy to answer your questions, um, or I could maybe I could uh, give a little presentation and then... Uh, sure. Uh, I, I do think that uh, you were on the agenda flying solo, and last minute they threw me out here. I'm happy to chit-chat, but if you had a presentation, uh, please uh, get, get us started here. And for those of you who don't know, David, do you want to just take 20 seconds and introduce yourself? Sure. Um, you know, back in, if you can believe it, 1979, I was a grad student at Berkeley with, like, you know, Bill Joy and uh, Eric Schmidt and all that, and... Uh, I, I realized that privacy was going to be the big thing in cyberspace. And so I uh, really started thinking about how you, one could provide it or if one could provide it. And I uh, was happy to really find some technical solutions that allowed a, a, a full spectrum of a, a solution to privacy. And that was published in Scientific American and CACM and all that. Um, but, you know, the infrastructure wasn't really there that, to enable the, the, the solution and the public wasn't really as sensitized to it as they are now. So it's kind of a perfect storm at this, at this time, right? We, we have, uh, you know, all the opinion polling is showing people are so concerned about it. And we're, we're it talking about, different. we're talking about, uh, thir 30 years ago, 40 years ago, depending on where you, you draw that yeah. line. Um, I'd, I'd like to think in the ensuing time that the privacy landscape has, has improved. Um, from, from your, your bird's eye view there, uh, how would you rate, how would you rate our progress since you got started in the oh, privacy the space? Oh, sharing is enabled. Uh, this is great. Um, let me see if I can, um, get these slides here. Um, let's see what this would be. What's this giant? Hold on a second. Hmm. Well, um, I'm not seeing the uh, my slides on among the options. What if I click this? You shall. Uh, okay. Here we go. Okay. Is that working? Technical problem overcome. Yes. Oh wow. Okay. Great. So um, yeah. So this this is uh, this is that's actually I, I was going to you know start by speaking about. Um, you know, my observations at, at Berkeley and my realizing this was really important. And so, um, you know, I, I also realized that, excuse me, um, what is it? that privacy uh, to be solved would, the only way to do it if effectively would be with cryptography and uh, to basically give control over people's information to them as kind of as we heard in part by the previous uh, speaker. So um, hopefully, yes. So w one of the things I developed in 79 was a solution to what's uh, in the intelligence world called the traffic analysis problem, which is keeping confidential who talks to whom and when. And this somehow underlies all of the uh, the solutions to, to privacy, because if, if you know, if you could link everything together by by uh, seeing who, who's talking, then there's no privacy. But so the um, this was uh, published, and uh, there's a video that that uh, explains it. And the other thing that was happening at that time was that the National Security Agency was saying that cryptography was perhaps born classified, like nuclear. Uh, uh, bombs and uh, technology, and it was illegal to talk about it at a public event, and you couldn't organize events and conferences and so on. And as so that's what I decided, having realized how important cryptography was to for going to be in cyberspace, I found it was uh, worth, you know, possibly facing some very serious repercussions from the that were threatened by the national uh, 
security agency to just secretly organize a conference on cryptography and we did and sort of set cryptography free you know like oh, everybody in the field pretty much showed up we had about 100 people there and uh launched the international association you could read about this um um, David, um, do you uh, yeah. do you think that when you look around at the the environment that we're in today, are there any um, laws uh, and or regulations that you think the innovators need to ignore in order to uh, follow in your footsteps? I don't know. I don't. You know, I didn't really think that much about it. I just did it. You know, we mailed the envelopes. Uh, you know, it, you know, we, they were printed where the free press uh, was printed, and uh, the whole the whole thing. Uh, clandestinely and uh, it, you know it was uh, it was quite a thing to launch an international organization secretly like that but we did it um, m can I just see if this video plays um, that well oh I'm sorry uh, I yeah there's uh, so uh, this was the this was uh, it, it let me let me speak to this just briefly the, the, the you know, we heard about this from the previous speaker. If you use a different pseudonym, let's say with each organization that you interact with, then you have the ability to uh, keep all of your own information uh, private to yourself. And they can give you, you know, you can, you can uh, transact with them by, in payments and you can receive what I call credential signatures from them. Uh, but today we'd say that then you can show zero knowledge proof that uh, you have a set of, of signatures allow, that you know, show that you've paid your insurance and whatever and allowed to drive your car and so forth without showing more detailed information underlying it. So it allows these, these uh, siloed uh, pseudonymous uh, relationships to uh, be uh, maintained by the individual controlling which queries about data are answered. The query has to be sent to you. If you agree to answer it, you can prove the answer is correct. And so this is uh, a comprehensive solution to uh, privacy problems. And I believe it's really the only fundamental way to do it. I mean, there's a lot of fancy, you know, a lot of people research the field these days, but if you really want to solve it, this is, you know, basically still so, the way to do it. David, I'm sorry to We're getting word that we're, we have to wrap things up here. Uh, I, I'm, I'm so sorry about that. I wanted to give you a chance to talk about um, uh, quantum resistant blockchain just very briefly, because I know that's something that uh, is, is, is near and dear to your heart. Um, when you look at this, the, the, the Web3 landscape that these people are, are building in and experimenting in, um, what is the, 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 the single biggest concern that you see going forward? And how do you prepare for something that hasn't actually happened yet? Well, the, the XX network, you know, we have our, our messenger, which is uh, now, you know, tens of thousands of people are using it. We're, we're going to open it up more widely pretty soon. Uh, it's, a, it's a standard type of, of uh, messenger, full featured, um, but it, it has quantum resistant privacy of the end to end communication, but all the messages are routed through the mixing. So please look, if you don't know what mixing is, please look on my website, chom.com, and watch that video I showed the picture of. But so, so this is the only messenger that has quantum resistant end-to-end -end security. Every other messenger says, oh, they have strong end-to-end -end encryption, but they've never, they haven't followed us uh, to have this. And moreover, we're the only one that has this metadata shredding, the, the mixing, the traffic analysis solution. And so um, for, you know, you, for you the young innovators, message, you can see the route that it took uh, so uh, here. So uh, can I just mention that we, just a couple few weeks ago, launched this um, uh, Elixir platform that allows all kinds of apps to be part of our our super app. So uh, it's like a, they're apps within our messenger, and you if you click on them, they they will uh, be uh, through deep links loaded in and 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 activated. So we've got like twenty of them that were. Uh, David, I, 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 I'm so sorry. We do have to do a hard stop here. Um, a, a, give closing thoughts here. Of the import, If you're building on Web3 and you're not considering uh, quantum uh, computing and the ability to possibly break your encryption, uh, can you even be considered a responsible builder? <laughs> So another thing about XX 
network is we do have a we have demonstrated a quantum resistant in the strongest way uh, consensus algorithm running at 3,500 quantum resistant payments per second, and that's linearly scalable. So we we've, we've run it. It's uh, you know, for for ten days and demonstrated it. So that's uh, that's providing a rock solid basis for the 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 the, the metadata shredding that's that's uh, that we're enabling with with this uh, messenger. Thank you uh, so product. much for joining us. I really appreciate it. Can you join? Giving David a round of applause, please. All right. So uh, David, thank you so much, and uh, we're going to have an event on October sixth. Uh, in your backyard, oh, yeah. uh, come yeah, to that. Yeah, that one I should really be able to make. Yeah, and Davos, and if there. you come to all three, uh, you get a chia pet. And Stuart <laughs> Haber is sitting in the front row, and he was nodding a bunch of times, but sometimes he went sideways. So you may want to follow up with him, see uh, you know if there's a beef <laughs> okay, there. Well, this could be a crypt. What's that? Yeah, he says. Yeah, you could say it yourself. Hi, David. Stuart here, sending my regards. Hey, Stuart. Great, nice, so great nice to, to hear you speak really again. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm glad that I was able to help you get those jobs and uh, I, I'm, I'm glad you're, 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 you're really, uh, you're in with all fours in the community. So it's uh, great to hear you, great to hear great. your voice. Great, thank you, David. All right, can we kill the feed there?